Oh, hi everyone, I'm Stan from Eagle Vision. I'm here with Ben Payne from Payne Advisory Group. Ben, welcome. Thanks, mate. Five years later. <laughs> yes, just a little bit. Um, so, uh, Ben, uh, look, I've known Ben for probably about almost 20 years. Uh, and right now, what Ben has been specialised in is a whole range of uh, services for property developments, uh, from accounting through to tax, through to um, even wholesale uh, funds management sort of work. So, um, in this series of videos, what we want to talk about is how the developers actually progress from being a speculator through to a professional uh, development business of sorts. So, um, Ben, what is it like for someone to be a speculator versus being a professional full-time developer? Yeah, so developers, as we know, come from all, all different um, backgrounds and, and start all in different ways. Some yep. start with, a, you know, they might just subdivide off their backyard and then all of a sudden they get the passion for it and, and they, you know, and they want to grow and they want to um, increase their level of activity. So, so typically that's the way most people start out. Not all people, you've got some that um, are professionals in the property development industry okay. and they might work for a larger fund manager. And then, um, and then they transition yep. into into their own developments. Um, but, but typically when they're starting out, it's either their own capital or, or close family or friends capital. Yep. Um, so, and it's done very small scale. And um, so, so in, in essence, they're just a speculator. They're, they're making a speculation mm. as in regards to a property development yep. and then whether or not that profit that property development is going to make a profit. But yeah, generally in terms of, I suppose, their, and what they make out of that development is generally just a profit share on the completion of the project. Right. Um, but through the, the whole course of the development, they're basically, mm. it's, it's their time that they're utilising to do it. And usually between, you know, being in their full-time jobs doing some of the other things, an yeah. accountant or a, yeah. Yeah. or um, project manager, project manager. Yeah. 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 correct. Um, so, so that's typically where they start out and, and the types of development activity that they do. Mm. But then over time, um, they you know they want to progress and get get bigger. So, and then they want to transition into that property development, I suppose, business. Right. And and typically, when we call it a business, it it's because it is a business. It ends up being mm. a full time career. And yep. it looks and feels like a business, you know, their development activities, you know, they might have a team and, yep. and it, even if that team might be an external team, okay, um, or they could have some internal staff, they sure. might actually have an office, you know, all of these aspects that you would normally see in a business. Some like business, exactly. And they're constantly reviewing projects and typically they've mm -hmm. got a number of projects going at any one point in time. Yeah, sure. So they might have, you know, one that's in acquisitions, they might have another one that's in construction, another one in planning, whatever. It so yeah. so there's normally multiple projects um, and typically as they grow into a business and they start to scale their activities, yep. um, and we'll talk about some of these benefits soon, but we'll also see that a lot of these businesses also start generating monthly income mm. out of the activities that they're actually doing. Yeah, so I was sort of going to ask you, so we've seen some of these massive developments all around. Uh, clearly the developers are doing something with it. They must be making a profit if they're doing it again and again. So what are some of the key benefits of scaling? Yeah, so it's your ability, um, and again, it's, it's, we start, everyone's different in terms of sure. developments and what their objectives are and everything else. but. Your ability to be able to capital raise yep. means that as a developer, you can start diversifying your own income or sure. your own your own capital. Yep. So you can invest over multiple projects mm -hmm. as opposed to having it all exposed into one project. And obviously, you know, the risk ex exposure yep. um, like, um, being a lot so higher. They will also probably gain some personal cash flow out of. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. correct. Right. Um, yep. but, but typically it's also because they... Um, by accessing capital, they oh. can also then undertake larger projects. Right, okay. So it gets them out of the space where they might be doing smaller townhouse projects or something like that, yeah. where they're competing against every other mum and dad property mm -hmm. developer, mm -hmm. every other, you know, builder developer as well. Yeah. They're in that, you know, the home builder developer that's sure. in that space as well. So there's a, there's a lot of activity and a lot of competition in that area. Mm. As you graduate and you start to do larger scale projects, yeah. 
the least amount of competition that ends up being in that space. Yeah. Um, so, well, it becomes probably professional competition. Professional competition. Yeah. And and they analyze their their numbers a lot more uh, and a lot better than what some of the speculators do. Yeah. Um, because they've got whole teams of advisors mm. behind it in, in in when they're undertaking their developments. Yeah. Um, so it also enables them to access in that space typically more highly profitable projects as yeah, well. Sure. Uh, and what are some of the fees that developers can actually charge back from their business? Yeah, so, and as we pointed out before, like if you're going to transition mm. into a full-time career in, in property development, yeah, you know, commonly you're going to need regular cash flow because yeah. you're going to have your own lifestyle issues that you're going to need to support. Or you might have family. Sure. Sorry, you might have kids in, in private school or whatever or else. It, maybe. You might have other investment properties or sure. loans, personal. Yeah, so... So you need to find a source of income out of your developments to do it. So, mm. so typically we see things like developers charging back to their projects, development yep. management fees, yep. um, project management fees or construction management fees. Mm. Um, we'll see other things even like finance procurement fees. So if they facilitate the financing mm. or the debt financing for the projects, they can charge fees back to their own projects. Yep. They might charge sales and, and marketing coordination fees, acquisition um, yeah, or the acquisition fees, correct. Yep, yep. yep. capital raising fees sometimes, right. depending okay. on the activity that they're doing. Sure. Um, other than that, there's other, some larger scale projects mm -hmm. um, lead to other opportunities to create revenues. So right. say for example, it's particularly um, evident in a lot of developments up in Queensland, say for okay. example, where where they sell their apartment buildings, so mm. they might sell management rights. Right, okay. So sometimes the developers might retain those management rights mm -hmm. okay. so that they get the ongoing revenue streams out of those management okay. rights. Yep. Um, it's not so common in other states. Okay. In, say, for example, in Victoria, New South Wales, it's more commonly you see a developer might retain mm. um, the body corporate management or the owner's corporation management. Right, okay. So that they might generate ongoing fees from that. And the other one, in terms of, I suppose, a future value from a development, once you get to some of these larger scale ones, mm -hmm. you know, we see things happening like, um, you know, retaining air rights in development. Sure. Yeah. So, so if you, when you're moving up in the scale, there's all these other fees and yeah. potential gains that you can make out of a, a mm -hmm. development yeah. that you just don't have with some of the just haven't got the stuff. Scale and the scope really to do anything. Yeah, right. correct. Perfect. Um, look, that is sort of all that we wanted to cover in this first episode of the series. Next time around, we'll talk more about actual capital raising and what does it take to create that scaling up to the next level of developments. Thank you for watching.